Hello, hello everyone. Welcome in. Let me know that you can see me and hear me. And today we are talking about five things or sort of like five areas of your life that you can level up to get the ring. I find that these things tend to be sort of blocks on our journey that once we get these things in order, it is easier to get wiped up, math, meet our mats. Let me know that you can hear me and see me. Please give this video a thumbs up. Welcome Anna to the Level Up Queens. For those of you guys watching live, if you want to participate in the live chat, please uh, sign up using the join button for YouTube membership or the link in the description box, comment and chat will also help you do the same. And uh, this also gives you access to trainings that are removed from YouTube to be placed in courses, but they remain for you. This is something we recently started doing. So here is number one thing. Now, before I start with this list of five things, what I want to say is that don't let these things block you in the sense of like, you know, some people waste like five, 10 years working on these things. I feel like these are things you should be working on anyways, and you can work on them while you're dating. You can work on work on them after you're even married. Like these are just like things that we should be working on anyways, I feel like, just to be, you know, living our best lives and have the best life experience. So don't use any of these things as an excuse, but at the same time, start working on this stuff. If you are past the age of 28, don't spend too much time silently doing your inner work while like keeping yourself out of the dating market because for women, age does matter. Uh, this is just kind of like the fact of life. Of course, you can do it later, but don't waste your prime years making excuses about like working on yourself, okay? Unless like there's some, some deep psychological stuff. So number one, I would say is work on your looks and your attraction. Um, I don't know why so many people currently just dress so frumpy and sloppy, especially women in their 20s. Oh, my God. Um, I, I don't know what's going on, but I keep hearing and seeing women all over social media claiming that they're dating and they look like slobs. They basically look like men, like homeless men. And maybe they're showing up on social media a certain way. But here's the thing. You will never see me dress down anywhere because I don't own those kind of clothes. I don't own things that I wear separately at home and then separately outside. So I don't even buy the excuse that you are dressing down for social media. Like make it a part of your identity. You should have a base level uniform like a template of outfits. I would say two to three templates that you repeat. Like when I go shopping, I know I'm either buying a skirt and a crop top or I'm buying a dress with a belt. Like it's so easy for me. I don't wear pants. I It's just so easy because it, it eliminates all the noise, all the things that Mina doesn't wear, I don't own. I have never owned sweatpants ever in my life. I don't, I think I have one. It's the brand Bellman uh, sweatshirt which I still haven't even worn. Like that's the only sweatshirt I own. It's a designer with like a big flashy logo. I haven't even worn that, right? I bought it to wear on a flight and I'm like, I can't be seen like this on a flight. Like, no, like, no. So make it a part of your identity to enjoy being a woman. Like have a base level that you just rinse and repeat every day. This is my everyday makeup. Like this is, you know, I'm not saying you have to wear this much makeup. Obviously I'm, you know, on YouTube. Um, but I mean, before I was on YouTube, I was wearing the same <laughs> makeup. So have some kind of a capsule for your life, base like level. This is my base level. You will never, ever, 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 <clears throat> anywhere in public and private, anywhere, see me more dressed down than, than this. This is me being comfy. This is like the base level that I do. Have your base level be attractive. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like I have something in my throat. <clears> throat> I've been talking all day. Teaching <clears throat> and coaching. Okay, I think it's better. 
especially when you're dating, like, you know, like in my culture, when a girl is like looking for proposals or like getting engaged and things like that, she has a little extra glow to her. Like she looks like a bride. So why are you looking homeless and then claiming that you're dating? So make your best level, like your base level, something that is a part of your identity that you do all the time. I did that also with my weight. I had, uh, you know, when I was having my babies and stuff, I was in this pattern and even before I had my kids where I would gain weight. And then if there was an event that I would like rush to lose weight, I would like, oh my God, I've got two months to get ready for this event. Oh my God, I got four weeks before this wedding. And I just decided after I had my second son, there was a big family wedding coming up and I was so stressed out trying to lose the weight. And at that moment, I made a decision. I made a decision that I was always going to stay within five pounds of my ideal weight. Like I have my athlete mode and like my maintenance mode and that is within five pounds. So you could invite me to something next week and it would take me a week to get back into athlete mode and be in the best shape of my life and then be back in maintenance mode, which is only about, you know, a couple pounds off. Like you guys know we were in California attending a family wedding last week. And when I came home, like clockwork, I was like, okay, within five, I was within five pounds, but I had gained a few pounds, obviously, because we were like eating all this yummy, delicious food. And, um, you know, I wasn't fasting as much and I was eating more carbs, but I'm, I'm coming back down. Like before I go to Dubai, I'm going to be back in my, cause I'm not going to let, like, I don't understand becoming 50 pounds overweight. Like how did, why didn't you stop yourself at five? Why didn't you stop yourself at 10? Why didn't you stop yourself at 15? How the hell did it even get to 50? Like what, were you asleep? Like, didn't someone knock you out? It, it doesn't make sense to me. So if you have your rubber band and you stick within that, then there's only so far you can go. So what I would recommend is what they say that if you want to gain weight, eat a variety of meals and at each meal have a variety of foods. And if you want to lose weight, you limit the variety. It, it's just the way that our brain functions. And so for me, the keto slash carnivore diet, which I've been following for the past 12 years, helped heal my autoimmune stuff, my hair, like so much stuff, so much stuff. I still follow that. Now I have a rubber band within that. So for example, right now I did like a 20 hour fast and then I had a very carnivore meal in between my client session and this call. And so I'm treating myself to a bowl of fruit. I'm probably not going to eat all of it. But now that I'm in within my five pound range, and by the way, in case you're wondering, it's 110 to 115. That's the range I stay within. Um, I'm 5'3", and that's where I feel my most. By the way, most people say that I look a lot heavier on camera. If you go on my Instagram where there's like full shots, you'll be able to see like my full physique. But I look heavier in these kind of videos. Whenever I meet my in-person intensive attendees, they always think I'm very tiny. So I, I stay within that range, and that's a healthy range for me. My joints don't hurt. I feel active. I feel my most energetic. I feel my best. I have the least amount of inflammation at that weight. So find a easy diet where you're only eating a certain amount of foods. You're not having too much variety if you need to eat, lose weight and stick with that. So the reason I allow myself fruits now and I can go for weddings and things like that and, and eat a little bit out of alignment and then bounce back is because first of all, it's an identity thing for me and I can get into keto really quickly and get out of keto like it's called metabolic metabolic flexibility uh, you guys see me posting on insta stories about this stuff secondly i don't have any weight to lose anymore and i no longer have any autoimmune issues so i allow myself nature's treats within reason and keep myself within that five pounds if you are dating especially if you're dating but you should be doing this anyways for your health you should be very mindful of your health. I also work out four to five times a day. I do vibration plate therapy. I do red light therapy. I do infrared saunas four to five times a week. Like take care of yourself. 
Like be someone that your man is going to be proud of standing next to. Like do, you don't don't look like a troll and then complain that like no one's asking you out or people are asking you out and not, you know, marrying you. Like you know, in real estate, when I was in real estate, we used to have this thing called pride of ownership. Like the way that people take care of their lawns and their home, like you can tell that they are like they have pride of ownership. Do you have pride of ownership in your body, in your being? Like, are you proud of being a woman? Do you carry yourself with grace and love and affection? Like, you can talk about self-love all you want, but if you look like you don't take care of yourself because you're overweight, your skin needs help, you know, you don't take care of your hair, you don't dress well, I'm not going to believe that you are someone that loves yourself. Like love is literally something that is requires action. It, it's a it's a verb, right? Like they say, let me see what you guys are saying. Yep, I use the zero app for tracking my intermittent fasting. By the way, I was going to do a whole video on my carnivore keto diet. And then you guys heard what happened with Dr. Berg. I'm so like, annoyed with where social media is going right now like i've always loved social media but i guess the western culture has become so fragile that we have to like protect everyone now and so dr eric berg who i've followed for like a decade he's helped me so much one of the uh, one of the core teachers that helped me on my journey they're bearing his videos now so those of you guys that say oh you know the algorithm will just show you more of what you watch it's not true anymore the algorithm can bury things if they it doesn't agree with certain things so apparently keto and carnivore and all of these things are getting buried now because that's not the stuff they teach you in medical school and they don't like that some people are becoming more educated about nutrition and then resolving their issues naturally and not using medications that companies have spent billions of dollars developing. So it's a whole hot mess. Uh, I, I'm so sad that this is happening to Dr. Eric Berg. So I was planning on doing this video and then Irfan saw that video and he was like, don't do the video on carnivore. He's like, your, your channel is going to get buried. People won't see you. And I'm like, you know what? I can still talk about this stuff without talking about it where the algorithm doesn't notice it that much or talk about it privately in my paid groups and my paid uh, content. But this sucks because the exact things that helped me cure my autoimmune issues are, are is information that our future generations will not have available because the algorithm is set to bury that information which pisses me off, so mad. So anyways, uh, you need to become literate in nutrition and fitness it's literally the easiest thing it's science-based learn your body learn the homo sapien diet and then follow it and have like a template that you can do look good next secondly number two mindset and your energy these this is another area to level up if you are someone that even has like one sentence that is negative out of your mouth about men you are not ready to get married i see this all the time women love picking men apart women love blaming men it's the same thing with money you can't have money if you hate money you can't have money and resent money you can't love money while you hate money it's the same thing with men stop speaking ill of men let men be especially when you're trying to level up and date why are you still talking about, like, for example, when I was talking about passport bros yesterday, some of you guys are talking about, like, sex tourism. That's not what we're talking about. The fact that your mind would even go there and that's something that would be on your mind already shows that you are not a classy lady. It already shows you're not a traditional woman. You have to have a better strategy. You have to be savage. There's some things that you could be aware of and stand against and still not use them in your dating life because they work against you. Like, I need you to become savage. Like, get savage about this stuff. The fact that you even know about that stuff already shows the kind of stuff that you're engaged in. Think of like a traditional woman that's raised in a happy family, healthy family, right? Like, she is a classy lady. She's not going to know about certain things. She's not going to know about certain behaviors because it's never been a part of her world. She's not 
you know, rolling in the mud with the pigs. She is not aware of those things. This is how you tell on yourself. This is where you need to really be detail oriented. This is when you try to pretend like you're traditional and you're not because you're talking about things that are literally telling on yourself. So you're going to have to remove your emotions out of dating and stop talking about a certain thing stop talking about certain things and stop talking about men in a negative light especially if you plan on having a healthy relationship if there's a man listening to to this if you hear a woman say even one negative thing about any man run in the opposite direction run in the opposite direction because she's harboring resentments against men and this is going to show up in your relationship traditional healthy women who have done their inner work or not needed to have a very healthy viewpoint about men they don't suddenly go into talking about you know all of this negative stuff because it's never been a part of their world or they've healed through it so you know how they say say that you can tell a wealthy person from someone who's pretending by focusing on the details is the same here men are very much in tune to this they're very much noticing the little details that help you tell on yourself so then they now have all the information that they need so if you are talking negative about men you are not ready for marriage go do your inner work go back to the drawing board you're not ready you're not ready okay that's something you're going to have to erase sorry mango time these aren't good mangoes oh my god in the summer in the in houston we now get pakistani mangoes and honestly pakistani mangoes are the best in the world in fact hillary clinton went to pakistan and had pakistani mangoes and then changed the laws that forbid pakistani mangoes being delivered to the united states that's how good they were so if you ever get a chance to go to like a pakistani store and you're able to order pakistani mangoes in the summer you have to try them there's like over 500 types. It's they're just so good. Okay. The other thing I want you to change. Okay, so it was mindset about negative. Okay, the other thing is, if you are still in the blame game, if your mind, if someone's having a conversation and your mind instantly goes to whose fault it is, or who's to blame, you're not ready. Because you're still in self aware Barbie and, million, and uh, uh, basic babe, you are not million dollar babe. And the quickest way you can get yourself into the million dollar babe stage is to stop working from a place of blame. You are not a victim. You're not to blame. No one else is to blame. You just move without emotion. You move forward. You look at the situation and you say, what's my part and what can I fix? What can I change? What can you just don't even worry about whose fault it is. But most people can't get themselves out of the whole fault game, the blame game, to even be able to have an adult conversation these days. If you start doing this stuff, your energy will completely start shifting. You will be less dense and more energy and more light and more radiant. And you will now be someone that is a reciprocal of a healthy masculine energy man. You will have more proposals than you know what to do with. Oh, a lot of people been using the Zero app. I'm always so like weird with eating on camera. Didn't have the consciousness to understand that weight was in my control as a child, aka victim mentality. I sure know now though, getting better every day. Beautiful. Your weight is definitely in your control. Can you talk about emotional eating? Yes, remove emotions out of most things out of your life and your life will be brilliant, okay? So emotions are something that you feel inside. They're not something that you do outside. They're just for you. You don't have to communicate them with anyone. You don't have to hot potato them on anyone. You don't have to take them out on food. You don't have to get emotionally unstable. Like your life will be so amazing if you remove emotion out of most things and just feel emotions in your body. So feel the emotion and then you don't have to eat to numb the emotion. Like it's really that simple. That's why I love my work because it's like, it's like just cut, cut that shit out. Like stop being overly emotional about everything. Do your inner work and then easy. You don't have to take it out on food or anything else.
Mina, you're so right about looks. I find it easy to stand out because a lot of girls here dress like men. Yep. The competition is so little. I feel like it's never been easier to win. I agree with Haney 1000%. There is literally no competition. In fact, the competition is so like non-existent that my clients in their 40s and 50s who put a little bit of effort in working out, who you know do up their makeup a little bit, they dress nice, are being asked out more and proposed more than my clients in their 20s who have crazy neck tattoos and dress like slobs and then complain that they can't find someone put a little bit of effort okay now the other thing is that i've heard women saying oh why are men so shallow they're actually not shallow they're very deep the reason that men use your looks to to gauge whether you're going to be a good life partner or not is so deep evolutionarily that it will blow your mind if you actually learn why they do this okay your looks give every bit of information about you they tell them your DNA structure. They tell them your epigenetics. They tell them what kind of diseases you hold in your body. They tell them how much fat you have in your body, your likelihood of you know, carrying a pregnancy to term. They tell about your emotional state. They tell about your self-love and your worthiness. That's not shallow. That's fucking deep. That is deep. That is so deep. In a split of a second, this species that has been designed to conserve energy knows everything about you subconsciously simply by laying eyes on you. Looks are important. And thank God that we have all of this knowledge now, all of this information. Like, I wish I could do this. Oh my God, if I could do this for people, like, this would make my life. If I could, like, have someone to myself, like any woman, this sounds like a movie, like a makeover movie. And I could have her for 30 days, like give me 30 days with any woman, I could completely turn her life around. I would completely change her gut microbiome. I would change her. She would look at least 10 years, dec like I could guarantee that she would look at least a decade younger. I could completely change her from the inside out. Why do I have this? Why can I do this? Why am I so confident? Because we have access to too much, so much information now. Like we've never had access to this much information about nutrition about inflammation, about the perfect workout. We've never had this many life hacks. We've never had this much access to our evolutionary history and what that means and looks like. Like, I wish I could open up like a little academy or a school or something where I could just like have someone there for 30 days at a time and I could completely, but I would, I would control what they ate. I would control, like I would need full control over their lives. I could completely change them like that. Maybe that's like a future thing. Maybe that's something that I'm, I'm developing. I don't know. But I wish I had that kind of like time and control over someone's environment because I could take anyone and reverse age them 10 years in 30 days. That's how much scientific information we have available now. And yet so more people look like slobs. So like there is no excuse. We need to cut this out. OK, we need to cut this out. This needs to be a Netflix show. Oh my God, that would be so awesome. I have to tell you something else. So uh, am I ready to announce this? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys about this a little bit. So back in my 90s, ba back in my 90s, back in the 90s, when I was a teenager and early adult, I used to go to California a couple times a year because my favorite cousin, my best friend lives there. And she's, she's my cousin, but we grew up together, best friends. And I used to go visit her like several times a year. And sometimes she would come, but more I would go because she had let tiny babies at the time. And then all of a sudden I got, you know, remarried and like all of this stuff happened. And like, I stopped going to California, stopped visiting as much. And so this time when I went, I was like, what am I doing? Like my sister, both of my sisters-in-law live there. They're always wanting me to come over. My favorite cousin, my best friend lives there. Why am I not holding intensives there? So I've decided that I am going to find a permanent place in California. And that is going to be like a hub. Like it's going to be like a school for me where I go repeatedly because it's like the perfect excuse. I get to visit my sisters-in-law. I get to visit my cousin, shopping, dining, all the things and be with you guys. And why did I not? So dumb. Why did I think of this? So California is might be where I open up like a permanent school kind of thing, which will help me be 
like in Houston and in California at the same time, which is like win-win for me. So um, that's what I'm planning on doing. So let's see what comes out of that. But maybe I need a permanent school where I can just like have people to myself for longer times where I can completely control uh, different aspects and like reverse age them a decade. That would be so fun. That It would just be brilliant. So number three, yes, okay? Number three is language. Stop talking bad about men. Stop watching content. Whatever you want, you have to erase all negative thoughts on that thing. Whether it's money, whether it's health, whether it's men. Uh, we're talking about getting the ring in here. You have to stop doing it. In fact, I routinely tell men that if you want to really know if someone's going to make a great wife, ask them enough questions, hold enough conversations. And if they have negative viewpoints on men, any men in their life, any men from their past that they haven't healed through and worked through, that is a huge red flag. So erase the red flag, do the inner work, get yourself out of that mode. You cannot be dating actively, wanting to become a man's wife and be fully provided for while you also hate men, while you also talk nasty about men. While, while you also hate passport bros or these bros, or like you shouldn't even know about that. This is what you're doing right now. This is what you're focused on. This is all you know. Like don't even discuss those things, okay? So think of any niche, any niche that you focus on, whether it's like old money niche, new money niche, Star Wars, I don't know what else is there, Dungeons and Dragons, Christianity, Islam, right? They all have a language. They all have a know-how. They all have an understanding. They have a knowledge base, and that's the framework that they work within, okay? If you are a classy lady, if you are wife material, if you're wanting to get wifed up, you shouldn't even know about the other stuff. That shouldn't even be in your niche. It shouldn't. You should, your vocabulary shouldn't even exist. Like, become ignorant about that stuff, and you will be more focused on what you're trying to develop you'll manifest it faster and you won't be telling on yourself and your past with all of this alternative alternative stuff that you're talking about okay so we're going to be working on a lot of these things on a deep cellular nervous system level in my newest course repaired and by the way we only have 48 hours left for this to, for the pre-order price i'm throwing that in the chat it's also in the description box if you guys need to be there this is a combination of a live plus recorded training uh course okay any questions about what we've talked about so far so looks and attraction this isn't being shallow this is being very deep they can tell a lot of things about you while just like a one second split look on you. And these days we can even tell your emotional state. So act healthy, dress healthy, you know, have a uh, base level capsule for these things. Number two is mindset and energy. And a lot of these things are related to food. Gut microbiome is, uh, you know, is the reason that we can feel depression, anxiety. A lot of these things have been linked back to our gut microbiome. The easiest way to reset our gut microbiome is fasting. Look up Dr. Eric Berg. Look up Dr. Jason Fung. Look up Dr. Mindy Perels. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. So many of these doctors have helped me on my journey. Uh, fasting is a big part of the homo sapien lifestyle. Hunger has been a big part of our lifestyle and we can't ignore it. We have evolved to have periods of fasting uh, f followed by periods of feasting. And so you have to recreate that in your life. I use the free version of the Zero app. I'm not sponsored or anything by them. You guys know I don't really take too many. Like, I have one, like better help. <laughs> I don't do sponsorships. But Zero is, app is something I've been using for many years. My uh, oldest son uses it. He also does fasting. Ar uh, Irfan uses it. So th make this a part of your lifestyle. Number three is language. Make your language be congruent with where you're going. Okay, don't be talking about scum. Don't be talking about nasty things when you are trying to be a classy lady and trying to secure your ring and your future husband. Act clueless. Don't even know about those things. They shouldn't even be in your mind. You are telling on those things. Okay, in fact, I've heard men being surprised. I, I knew this couple where the woman talked about something that a classy woman wouldn't even know about. And I remember her husband just looking at her and saying, how do you even know about that? Like almost like 
being a little suspicious. And I was like, oh my gosh, like don't, don't discuss things that a classy woman wouldn't even know about. You wouldn't even know about those things, okay? Matt, have your language match the branding that you're trying to go towards. Okay, let me see what you guys are saying. You know, does the repaired course help us who need to repair with friends and siblings and parents? So I said this yesterday uh, as well that pair bonding has to start with family and friends and like the larger community. So I have modules in there with pair bonding in general. I think the Western society is only able to pair bond. Most people are only able to pair bond with their dogs and cats for some weird reason, especially with their dogs, but they're not able to do it with humans anymore, which is quite interesting because it's very different in the East. In the East, they pair bond better with humans and then animals are secondary. But in the Western culture, what I've seen is that most people can pair bond no problem with their animals, but they can't do it with humans, which is really unusual for us as a species, quite unusual. So uh, yes, it, we will cover pair bonding in all relationships because it's essential. If you can't do it in one area, you're not gonna be able to do it in another, okay? Number four, thing that you need to level up if you uh, want to get the ring, uh, remove your marriage, blo marriage blocks, is wife skills. People don't know how to be a wife anymore, which also means people don't know how to be a husband because men, women have changed so rapidly and men have always responded to women. They don't even know their place in society anymore. Wife skills are really important. One thing I've noticed, uh, tell me if you've noticed this too, I've noticed that people love to learn about dating. They don't really learn want to learn about like being a wife. Like I feel like that's more rare. I think that most people don't really want to mar get married. Like topics on marriage and healing and like being a wife don't get as many views and tractions as like Jerry Springer version of dating. Like you would much rather watch videos on like how he was a narcissist versus how you could be a better human being and be a better wife. So do you see, like, we're so used to shifting blame that we don't actually want to do our inner work. The few of us that are like, you know what? What was my part in this? Let me do my part. Let me do my inner work. Like, there's no competition. There's no competition because everyone's out there screaming narcissists at each other while we're over here doing our inner work and making our lives better. So there is a big difference. I heard someone talking about this recently. I can't remember where. I thought this was like really interesting and I'm going to look this up. She was talking about that narcissists only, that mostly attract people that are bipolar. So if if you attract narcissists, you might be bipolar, which is really interesting because I'm like, way to put the blame back. You have to, you have to look at yourself. In all societies, we always blame the person with more power. And when it comes to relationships, women hold all the power. Because women hold all the power in relationships, if a relationship is failing, look at the woman. Look at her inner work. Look at her worthiness. Look at her life skills. Because she's the one with more power in that dynamic. Just like if an adult was dealing with a child, Whatever happened, we would blame the adult because the adult holds more power in that dynamic. If it was a boss and employee situations, no matter what happens, we would blame the boss because the boss holds more power. Women hold all the power in relationships. We've always hold, held it. We are the gatekeepers. And that's why it is appropriate to call out women in this domain and be like, babe, what inner work are you doing? What are the life skills that you're bringing to the table? How do you know how to pair bonds? Do you know relationship skills? Do you have healthy communication skills? Because men follow your lead in relationships. That's he leads the household, like the container, the structure setting, but you lead the relationship because that's always been the feminine domain. So if you don't have healthy wife skills, good luck with that. Good luck with that. It's not going to work. That's why we have such a high divorce rate now is because women have forgotten their life skills including me i had all of this knowledge and then had forgotten it and had to relearn it so before i get to the last one any other questions about the ones that i've touched on so many dating coaches calling success long-term boyfriend girlfriend yes because that's 
that's just as far as they can get. Like the standard is so no, low now that being able to get a man that's simply sleeping with you is like a badge of honor now, which was like the like for women, the easiest thing for us is having access to men. Like we, we have men wrapped around our fingers, right? Like we have so much attraction, so much seduction skills, so much of a, a leg up over men when it comes to relationships. That's not a badge of honor. That's just like, duh, what else do you have, right? Like any woman can attract pretty much any man. But now that women are becoming men and forgetting their skills, like the standards are so low that now like getting someone to sleep with you is like a badge of honor, which that's like this base level. Like it was a dot before. Could you please give examples of wife skills and how to improve in this department? Yes. Okay. So I wish that Pakistani uh, serials, dramas had better um, captions. What are they called? Yeah. Captions, I think. However, if you can watch Pakistani dramas, they're on, uh, on YouTube a lot. There's some on Netflix. Netflix is better because Netflix has good like subtitles. That's the word I was looking for, subtitles. You will see all the relationship skills. Oh my God, like they're so good. Like you can see it in action. So uh, number one relationship skill that women need to have is understanding that as a wife, you are your husband's support team, emotional support team, and you are his um, sort of like his oracle. Whatever you bring to the table, whatever energy you bring, he follows. So you set the culture of the entire dynamic. If you are someone that keeps a nice house, is more religious, is more traditional, he follows that. If you're someone that wants to introduce like crazy, you know, open relationships, you know, all of this stuff, and you know, healthy men would still have a stance against a lot of that stuff. But you know, you're going to start introducing yucky things into your marriage. If you have a, a culture of complaining and bitching all the time, that's going to be the culture of your marriage. So as a woman, you set basically the foundation energy and culture of your relationship. So wife skill number one is to use what you have to make the energy of your relationship better. Wherever you are, you know, um, the only exception would be it's like physical abuse, you know, cheating, things like that. I don't believe that most people in the US and the Western culture are telling the truth when they talk about uh, verbal abuse. I think it's more like both parties doing it kind of thing. So I don't get into that. But if it's like, you know, then get yourself out, like don't be someone that stays in the abusive environments, obviously, but most relationships are not that women, you know, like to pretend like it is, but it's not. Most relationships are just normal, healthy relationships waiting on you to Set the culture of your relationship. Treat your home as a company and say, okay, what is the culture of my team here? Like, what is our motto? What is what is like the thing that our family is known for, right? So for us, it's like letting it be easy, letting it be fun. Like, that's what we're known for. Like, we are where the fun is, right? Like, we let everything be easier. We let everything be fun. So what is yours? You set that culture. The other thing is that communication skills, understanding that men have a disadvantage when it comes to communication, just like women have a disadvantage when it comes to physical strength. Men and women bring reciprocal complementary things to the table. So in my relationship, Irfan obviously has a lot more testosterone, is stronger. I have a physical disadvantage. He has a physical advantage. However, when it comes to communication, I have a physical advantage on that because women tend to be, this is evolutionary, we're gatherers, there is a reason for where, why we have better communication skills. Men, women are better at communicating, we have better communication skills, we talk more, uh, we are more in tune to nonverbal cues and things like that, and more, especially when we're pair bonded. So I don't hold things against my husband if he didn't say things quite the right way. Like, I understand his intentions behind things. In fact, if he's ever talking to someone else, it has happened. Actually, this happened literally last week. Let me give you this example. 
So Irfan absolutely adores his family. He just loves his sisters and all of his extended family. And his sister's son, our nephew, was getting married. And this is, my sister-in-law has three kids and this is the first one getting married. And in our family, you know, the, the families arrange the marriages and, and pay for everything and everything. So she was under a lot of stress trying to arrange all of these events and making them just right for her son and his wife. And so she was calling Irfan, kind of consulting with him and running ideas. And Irfan tends to be very practical and very like, just keep it easy, don't overcomplicate things. So he kept saying, you know, are you sure you want to do this? This sounds kind of complicated. Is there an easier way to do this? It's kind of coaching her. So when we were in Cali, we were all sitting around. And my sister-in-law goes, you know, the one guy that just kept trying to talk me out of everything. And so I thought she was talking about her husband. And she goes, this one right here, Irfan. And so, like, at first, Irfan was, like, trying to kind of, like, explain himself. But then he just got quiet. And he looked at me. And I was like, he just loves you so much. And he doesn't want you to stress at all. And she's like, I know. I know. So, like, even when he couldn't explain something, right? Like, I know his intentions. I know he loves his sister to death. And I know sometimes he was coming across as almost like a party pooper, but he doesn't want his sister to be stressed out. So he's like, are you sure you want to do that? That sounds complicated. Let's keep it easy. So understanding your man beyond just his verbal capabilities. Oh my God, I watched something yesterday. I was, I was like, what is going on with people these days where this uh, woman was complaining because her boyfriend said to her, babe, I'm going to go do the groceries because you make a grocery list. And she was bitching and complaining because she said, why should she make the grocery list? Why can't he make the grocery list? I think it's so sweet when my husband says that to me. So Irfan learned when we first got married that I actually do not enjoy doing the grocery. I never asked him to do the grocery. It just came up that I actually do not enjoy doing the grocery. I have not ever had to do the grocery since that day. Like never. I did it twice when we moved into this neighborhood because I wanted to and it felt like it and I had a large pantry that I wanted to fill up, but I wanted to do it. Every week he's like, hey, uh, go ahead. And we have an app that we use for our grocery. He's like, uh, please update the app. I'm going to go do the grocery. I think that's so sweet. But like, I feel like these days women take even like the most sweetest gestures and make them nasty, make them like negative. Like what's what's wrong with people these days? Like what are they supposed to do? They can't do anything for you because you can't receive anything. So another part of wife skills I would say is knowing, knowing your advantages, what you bring to the table, knowing his, and then working within those. Like I know that communication is uh, something that the woman brings. So I don't blame my husband when he doesn't have the best communication. I try to ask him questions. I try to say, well, what did you mean by that? And when you said that, you know, that it came across this way in, to me, is that what you really meant? And over time, I'm building up my library of understanding him more. Over the years that I've been curious and asking him, I'm understanding, oh, when he says this, he means this. You know, this is how he expresses his love. This is how he expresses this. So instead of being curious, if you're attacking your partner or expecting them to get something that is not their God-given gift, I think, you know, that that's going to fill both of you guys up for failure. So in my culture, you know, we understand the female roles and we understand the, the male roles and we understand the advantages that we both have and we work with them. So I bring the communication skills, he brings the physical skills and we work with our strengths. That's another wife skill is understanding the differences between male and females. Okay, I could talk on this whole subject. By the way, I need a poll. I was going to put a poll up on YouTube. My first California intensive, I'm trying to decide whether we want it to be on relationships or like money and manifesting. So let me know in the chat and also in the comment because I'm literally in the process of doing that now and finding like a permanent location so we can be in Cali all the time. I'm, I'm going to be like half time. I'll be the half time. Half time here, half time there. It's going to be so fun. Okay, let me hear what else.
Uh, hi, Mina. Off topic, but I had my human design chart read by your son this morning, and wow, all I can say is thank you for providing your teachings. Awesome! I'm so happy to hear that. For those of you guys that don't know, my son Armand does these fabulous, fabulous human design readings. I get nothing but absolute, like, amazing testimonials from people that go uh, do his, their readings and their kids' readings. I'm going to throw his email in the chat. It's majestyofdivinity at gmail.com. It's also in the description of every video, and I'll post it in the chat. So uh, you can email him to get his rates. It's crazy because having long-lasting relationships is a central part of humanity and very important for survival. Still, maybe not vi vitally, but for your... It's very important. It's very important. And this is just something that women innately know. So we have to stop blaming other people and go back to our own truth. Number five uh, area to level up is your life skills, Okay. I don't think it's a sexy thing to be walking around claiming that you don't know how to cook, you don't know anything about nutrition, you can't keep a clean house. Like these are base level things that you need to be able to do whether you're single or married. And to me, there's nothing more disgusting than a woman that claims and is proud of living in a filthy house. Or, oh my God, there's this new thing I want to just throw up when I hear this. I, I will never understand this, never. Okay, don't even try to make me understand this because I'm telling you now I can never understand why women online are walking around talking about not bathing for days, not brushing their teeth. Like what is wrong with society? I mean, this is mental illness. It's got to be mental illness. I can't think of any other reason why a woman would think that that is okay. First of all, okay to do and then okay to share and brag about. So life skills, okay, hygiene. Uh, cooking skills, um, just keeping a clean house, like not being a filthy animal. Like, is that too much to ask these days? Is that too much to ask? Okay. Like basic life skills, how to balance a checkbook, how to budget for something, you know, just base level skills, how to not overspend, like how to not be in the negative every month, just basic life skills that people have to learn when they're adults. Like that just shows your base level i would say like comprehension like you should know how to do that if you're 18. like 18 you should know those things okay my son is almost 19 he knows all those things okay he could teach you a whole class on nutrition and fitness he can cook he can you know he's learning he's learned about investing in finances like from us growing up but now he's actually doing it on his own with very little assistance from your phone so he can learn how to do it taxes like these are base level skills base level like bare minimum okay let's not act like we're just complete like you know we're not adults it's okay to let someone else do those things for you as part of an agreement in a marriage of different skill sets you bring but i think you should still know how to do them okay there's a big difference in like being completely clueless and not being able to function but versus allowing someone to take care of you. I think there is a big difference between the two. Everyone, please give this a thumbs up. Okay, questions, comments, what's coming up? Okay, so Nicole is saying money and manifestation for the... Um, intensive in california we have the uh, how, uh, dubai one happening in three weeks i'm so excited i had missed one you know would you say wearing a workout set with makeup and hair done around the house is still not putting effort into your looks it depends i mean um Personally, I don't recommend wearing workout gear all the time. I've talked about this before that the I believe that uh, UTIs and like yeast infections and things like that have gone up in women since they started walking around in leggings all the time and in workout gear. This These items were not meant to be worn all the time. They were 
very for a very important function by the way i don't even work out in workout gear this is totally off topic but i have a uh, silk nightgowns they're actually silk dresses from lily silk that look like nightgowns but they're actually dresses and they're very comfortable i have like eight or nine of them and that's what i wear every single day to go to bed and like lounge in and then i when i wake up i work out in that and so I don't even wear workout gear anymore, but I would not recommend wearing workout gear all the time. It's not your body, like all, your your precious stuff like needs to be aired out. It doesn't need to be tightly. I can't even wear pants anymore. Like I just, since I started wearing dresses and skirts only for the last five years, I just feel so constricted in pants. I would definitely not be wearing workout gear all the time. For California, there's two places that I go. I go to uh, the San Francisco area because my one sister-in-law lives there. And then my cousin and my other sister-in-law live in Orange County area. So that's where it would be. During dating, how can we balance showing that we can handle our basic life skills and tasks but still show we desire assistance. So you handle your business and you also allow him to do things for you. Like it's really easy. Okay. So you're, you know, you know how to balance your checkbook. You can cook for yourself. You can keep a clean house. You're like an adult and yet you let him plan dates. You let him lead the relationship. The, these two things, they don't conflict with each other. They actually work really well. In the winter, I wear short dresses with uh, over-the-knee boots. I love my Stuart Wiseman over-the-knee boots, so that's what I wear. I, I try to wear pants. I have a pair, and I put them on like three times in the last five years, and all three times I took them off before I left the house. <laughs> it just, it you get treated differently when you're wearing dresses and skirts, and you feel differently. Like my sexual energy just within my own body has completely skyrocketed since I only started wearing dresses and skirts. Like, I don't know what it is. I mean, obviously you can wear pants if you want to. I'm just telling you, that's how I feel. Like I just can't go back to pants. The being treated differently is like sh so shocking too. Men and women and children treat you differently when you wear dresses and skirts. Oh my God, I was just in, in that area. I was in Lake Towel, San Francisco, San Jose for the family wedding. I did not know you were there. So excited. Mina is bringing energy to Orange County. Would love relationship course from you. I don't think anybody can teach relationships the way you do. Thank you, Elsa. Okay, I'm going to have to really... I, I know I'm going to be doing more than one. I, I, I'm going to turn... California into like the main hub just because I rather just be there more. I don't like the taxes and things there. So that's why we, I don't live there, but I love California. So this is like the best way to live in Houston, which I love, and then travel there more. Yeah, no Lululemon. Mm -mm. I mean, I own Lululemon. I used to put it on to work out and then take it off. Like, that's what you're supposed to do, right? It's not supposed to be your everyday gear. It's not good for your body. Your your lady bits need to be aired out, okay? Like, you, yeah, you need some energy down there. You don't need to be so constricted. I don't know about Europe right now. We did one in Europe last year. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, we're coming to Japan next year. Um... Dubai is happening in three weeks and then um, and then probably California and then Japan. Let me see if I had missed anything else. I have all my single girlfriends telling me why I should be married. If I had to give up Chanel bag for having a family planning, you're right. I need to be conscious of friendship choice. Wait, so they're telling you you're going to have to give up a Chanel bag? Wait, what? I 
I would say don't take relationship advice from people who haven't been in long-term, healthy, happy relationships, just because I know people get triggered when I say this, but there is a lot of nuances, a lot of nuances that go into relationships so much that you don't really know until you're in it. I think you can be a dating course, a dating coach if you're single, I guess. Like people have lower standards for that, but I would not trust my long-term marriage to someone that isn't in a long-term happy relationship because of the nuances that are there. I've had clients come to me where therapists actually made their relationships worse because the therapist it's, themselves wasn't married. It, it didn't, they didn't have that skill set. They just knew this book that they read, the system that they have, but they don't know how to apply that with a real person in a long-term union because they have never done that themselves. Oh, I see. So I I had to go through that too, because I when I got married, you know, before I got married, I was making like $250,000 a year. And when I married Irfan, he was making 130,000. So a lot of my family was saying, well, you're, that's a downgrade, but not to me, because I, his 130 that he's making is worth a lot more to me than the 250 that I was making because I wanted to be a stay at home mom and, and have my family. Now I now have a huge closet full of Chanel that all of my friends and families are like, wow, right? But I didn't have that then. And that's okay because I don't have to have all the things at exactly one time. I timed it according to how God created me. Like God created me to have my babies by a certain age. So I had my babies then and did that. And then now I get to have the other things. I don't think it all needs to happen at exactly the same time. Your clothes are beautiful from where do you buy? Uh, all my skirts that I wear, the sari skirts are all from Amazon. They're in my Amazon store, I believe. My top is from Burberry. I usually shop from uh, Neiman Marcus. I have a personal shopper there. She sends me stuff and then charges my credit cards and then she ships it over. So it's like really easy for me. Um, other than that, um, the jackets that I wear, I'm sitting on one right now. These are from a brand called Generation Love. I'm very much a creature of habit. I don't like to use a lot of my creative energy focused on clothing or things like that. I like to dress well, but I once I find something that works, I just rinse and repeat. I have an appointment today at 5.30 actually to go meet with my um, designer that does all my uh, clothes for like weddings and my intensives to uh, I have a couple things I'm trying to get uh, for the Dubai intensive. So I have a few places and then I just rinse and repeat. I don't waste a lot of energy on like reinventing the wheel. One of my mentors always says it's best to take advance advice from people who have what you want and have been where you are. So no relationship advice from people who don't have successful relationships. I agree. Can I share something with you guys? Like, I hope this isn't going to come out the wrong way, but let me share this with you. This it's so funny that you said this because I was thinking about this yesterday. I thought about this quite a bit. What I've learned in my life is that I've had friends do this. I've had family friends, family members do this. And I've even had people that I was following and looking up to me, do, uh, looking up to do this. They will give you a certain advice, okay? And then change their mind when their circumstances change. So let me give you an example. There was a woman on YouTube that I used to follow over a decade ago that was telling everyone to... Um, no matter what, get your nails done and hair done in a salon, even if you have kids. And there were a lot of women, including me, that were a part of her community that kept saying, but we just don't have that in the budget, right? Like, we're trying to do this. And her thing was, find a way to do it. This has to be something that you outsource. And so there were times where I had my nails and done, but mostly I did them myself when I was in that period where we were trying to pay off our house and, and all that stuff, right? I didn't, think too much of it. The minute this woman had her own kids, gets what? does anyone want to get guess what happened? Go in the chat, tell me what do you think happened? I'll, I'm just going to shut up. The minute her situation changed, and I have a thousand examples of this, 
thousand examples of this that I can give you. Let me see if you guys get it right. What this woman did as soon as she had her own kid. Yep, she completely changed her story. She said, well, I have kids. Yes, but that's exactly what your people were saying, right? right? But I have a million stories like this. Uh, let me give you another one. When I had Armand and I was a single mom, I also had a friend that was trying to get married for the first time and having a lot of trouble because she was overweight and just oversharing in the dating stage. And she and I would spend a lot of time together, but she was very negative towards my parenting. Um, like she would say, oh, you're spoiling him. You're doing this or you shouldn't do this, right? What do you think happened when this woman got married and had her own kids? What do you think happened? She started doing this. She started taking care of her kids just like I was taking care of my son, right? What I've learned is that don't take advice from other people that are not in your situation because the minute that they are, they'll change it. I'll give you another example. I had a family member saying so many negative things about my marriage. So many negative things. She said negative things about my marriage, negative things about my house, negative things about my kids, negative things about me being a stay-at-home mom. And the first chance that she got, she married someone exactly like my husband, bought a house that looks like my house, my old house, not this house, okay? And started using my exact diet, my lifestyle plan, built a home gym in her home, exactly like mine. So do you see what happens? Another example, I had a family member <laughs> saying you shouldn't post on Facebook. So when we got married, if we were traveling a lot and having fun, and when my husband would take me on trips, we would post on Facebook. Don't post, don't post, you know, it's very negative, evil eye, all this stuff. The same person, when she got married and her husband started traveling with her, guess what she did? So people will have these opinions because something in them wants that and it's triggering them. And the minute they have it, they'll change their mind anyways. So don't take advice from people that do not have your dream lifestyle. I have a thousand examples of this where people have said all kinds of things and then went and it did exactly the thing I was doing. And I'm like, thank God I didn't listen to them and destroy my life. Because that would have been like really dumb, right? When they went and did the same thing. So they don't know what they're going to do in those circumstances because they're not in your circumstances. These people that were saying I shouldn't post on Facebook about my trips didn't have any trips planned. The minute that they did, they started posting. Okay, so don't take advice from people who don't have your lifestyle or the lifestyle that you want. They don't know. Even if they're like good people with good intentions, they don't know how they will behave under those circumstances. The best marriage block advice I learned from Mina was ask yourself why you don't want to get married. Then do inner work around that. Yes, Khabibi, it's funny that you mentioned this today because I was talking about this in Cords and Contracts. You can basically do this with anything. You can say, why don't I want to lose weight? What are the benefits of not having money? Like you're kind of trying to get at your psyche of where is it that you have some duplicity, some beliefs that are actually keeping you from the exact thing that you want. It makes it so much easier to be selective about who you listen to when you know to only take advice from people who have what you want. I agree. I mean, there's so much advice coming at us right now, right? A lot of it might be good advice. Just because it's good advice doesn't mean it relates to your life. That's another thing I've learned, right? Because I have different priorities. I have a different value system. I want to live my life a certain way. Other people might have really great advice that doesn't fit into my lifestyle, and that's okay. So once you know exactly what blueprint you're following, what to filter out, it is easier than to take advice from the right people. Rani said, why are you teaching women to be gold diggers? If that is what you're getting out of my content, I feel sorry for you because like, that's literally the opposite of what I'm doing, but to each their own. What do you think about passport girl? These girls are working full time and doing everything to bring the guy in that country. What I would say is stay away from it because it instantly kills polarity. Anytime you're like saving someone 
or like doing something for them, like for the man, even if he's a great guy, I think it instantly puts him in a one off in a disadvantage. Like, for example, I've had family members that, you know, went back home and met someone there, married someone there and brought them. And these were great guys, but they felt kind of out of place because they felt like the things that they should be doing for their wife, their wife was now doing for them. And they kind of felt a little emasculated. So I would recommend not doing that. Like, if you can avoid it, I know sometimes that's your only option. If that's your only option, go and do your thing. Um, but I would say avoid it if you can. These people are probably well intentioned, but just don't have the experience and knowledge to get advice in those areas. I agree less, right? Like the nail polish girl, she didn't know how she would behave when she herself had kids. So she should not be giving that advice because she doesn't know how she would behave in that circumstance. I, I totally agree. I don't think they're being, you know, they're trying to harm you. It, it they just don't know there are so many nuances to parenting and relationships that that's one area i definitely say you need to hold the post for people that already have that thing successfully and for a really long time because these days even when people are just you know getting engaged and then the next day they're like a relationship coach getting engaged and then getting married and then pair bonding and then holding that relationship forever are completely different skill sets and each of those things require different growth different mindsets different lessons that you have to learn so um it's you know you're going to get different things from different teachers at different stages is what i'm going to say automate to avoid decision fatigue that is like one of my biggest life goals. i'm always like asking myself where else can i eliminate decision fatigue the more i do that the more creative energy i have access to to write my books create my courses you know create my intensives like do the things i really want to do but if if my energy is constantly being sucked into everyday mundane decisions then i feel like there is less to channel into your work Any other questions coming up to leveling up or repaired our new pair bonding course that's happening soon? One of the positives of having like a closed chat is that the questions are better and the conversations are more up leveled, but then the negative is that there's less people. I like interacting with you guys. How to heal from domestic violence. I'm still with the same person, husband. He has promised it won't happen again, but I can't heal no matter what I do. I think this, like physical violence, is something that. I don't think we heal from until we actually get away from. So this is one of those rare situations where I do advise separating, taking a break and like really making sure because I, from my experience, and I don't have a lot of experience working with clients like this, but from what I know, I believe that this is something that's, that takes a long time for the person doing the abuse to actually heal if they ever do. And so I think the reason you're having a hard time healing is that he might he might be the one that needs to heal and you just need to get out of your your I, I can't imagine being in a physically violent situation and staying so I don't know if I'm the best person to help you in that uh, but though that's my non-negotiable that is just something that I'm not I have non-negotiables where I'm like not even willing to have a conversation and I will walk away. I think most relationships are repairable. I don't think physical violence is something that I believe is repairable. I would not be able to sleep with this person. I can't close my eyes and relax my nervous system knowing that they are capable of hurting another human being, especially me. Like I just can't. So 
that's something I feel like I wouldn't be best advice, best able to advise because I would have left that same day. How important do you think it is to invest in your home environment, home decor, as part of your leveling up journey? Um, I don't invest in other things. I only invest in myself. And this is important for me because to me, if the home decor is making me anxious or stressful and, and it requires a lot of upkeep, that's not me investing in myself, so I won't do it. I keep my home pretty minimalist and pretty kind of like easy and simple because of this very reason, because I don't like clutter. I don't like things to be very chaotic in my home environment. So I would say what makes you feel good and not just momentarily, but long term. Sometimes it's really fun to go buy a knickknack. I've done this in the past where I would go buy some kind of a knickknack and then Later, it wouldn't feel good. It would feel cluttered. It would be something that requires maintenance. And like, and then I'm like, okay, this, it, it doesn't feel good all the way through. So I would say, what makes you feel at peace? What makes you feel like calm? What brings a, a, like a soothing energy to your environment? I, I'm, I'm not someone that likes like a lot of knickknacks and stuff. I've been investing a lot in making my home look nicely lately and sometimes feel guilty about spending so much, but also feel like it's really beneficial. So I would say that's more of like an inner work thing. Um, where is the guilt coming from? Like, are you spending money you don't have that sometimes we could feel guilty? Or are you feeling mo spending money that needed to go somewhere else first? Sometimes if it's misaligned, it can feel that way. But like, that's where the inner work portion comes in. Do you have any advice for information overload and not being able to embody, apply all the things you learn? Yes. So we are evolved to take action. So if you're consuming information and not moving your body to like put that thing in embodiment, that's when you start feeling overwhelmed. So stop consuming act, um, content. Even if I'm not saying completely stop, but I'm saying also do something to put it in place. So for example, if I kept watching content on working out, but actually not working out to my subconscious, to my DNA, to my human, like evolved brain, that's not going to be great because that's going to make me more anxious. It's going to make me self-aware Barbie. It's going to make me want to spit it out because when we had access to information, whether it was like fight or flight information or any information, we usually took action towards it. Like we did something with that information. We've never had access to this much information that we weren't doing anything with, right? So are, what action are you taking? Are you working out every day? Are you like, what, are, what action are you taking as a result of this information coming into your life? I'm going to open up the chat for a few minutes and then I have to go. I told you guys I have that appointment, my shopping appointment. Wait, how do we do it? Okay. I think it should have worked now. Yeah, I'll, I'll hang out for a couple more minutes and then I have to go. I mean, I've been doing intense in our work through your online courses and I feel like I'm alone sometimes. Is that normal? So who, who are you peer bonded with? Who is your support system? 
what is it a friend is it a family member like your inner work doesn't have to be in isolation like human beings don't do well in isolation we are social creatures and we need someone so usually a whole tribe so who's your support team who are your people are you giving them enough time? Also, when people say intense in our work, I would say lower the intensity on that. Like in our work is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be something that you're doing because you want to improve your life. It's not supposed to be miserable. It's not supposed to be intense. It's supposed to be fun. I'm already married, but this was still great content. Thank you. You're so welcome. And I think all of these things apply. Like I'm always working on my wife's skills. I'm always working on my fitness. I'm always working on my language, like life skills, like everything, mindset, energy. So I don't think these are things that we throw away once we, you know, get our goals. Like I, I don't believe that like we should let ourselves go once we get married. Like I hear people saying that I'm like, no, you should... Like you should still want your best life. You should still want to be healthy. You still want to be growing. I took your advice a while ago and purchased all skirts and cute tops and only wear my workout clothes at the gym. I've been a minimalist, so that's not a problem while having a clean home. Yeah, you, you know, there's ways to make it so easy, right? Like, I'm so glad you're doing that. It just eliminates mental clutter. Like, I don't have to think about what I'm going to buy or what I'm not going to buy, right? It's like, these are my colors. I only buy these colors. This is the template that I wear. This is, you know, th this is what I eat. You just make your life so much easier and you don't have all of this chaos and decision fatigue. Thank you. Uh, that's so funny, Fergus, uh, Fergie. She said, you look great like always. Hair is giving goddess. I felt like I was having a bad hair day yesterday, so I appreciate you saying that today. <laughs> I was in a completely 50-50 marriage, then I found your work. I told him I was ready for home to take for him to take over the mortgage and other bills, and he did. How do I convince him to pay all the bills? So first, after he took over those, how much time did you appreciate him? Like how, what do you do? What's your daily appreciation? Um sort of like filling up his cup routine? Do you brag about him to people where he can hear? Do you compliment him all the time? Do you show up extra like sexy and juicy because he's paying all the bills and tell him, tell him that that's why you're able to relax? First do that before moving on to the next thing because sometimes when you don't take the time to appreciate, it doesn't expand your container and it also can cause problems because they feel like, well, I'm doing all this and not being appreciated and here you are want, wanting me to do more. So grateful to have found your content before getting married and having children. I feel so much more prepared and optimistic after listening to your content. I'm so happy to hear that, Les. I love that for you. I don't know how to talk about myself when talking to guys. I wish I knew how about playing up my life skills beforehand. I'm introvert, so I usually come off boring. So con ma making conversation is definitely a skill set that I would recommend taking up. Like learn how to be a little bit more communicative. This doesn't mean you have to talk a lot, but it's like your whole body. Like even if you're sitting in silence, like what is your body language saying? As far as life skills, here's how I did it. Like... I was existing in it, so it wasn't something that I'm like lying about, but yes, I'm like playing it up. So for example, when Irfan would call me and uh, he would say, what are you doing? I would say, oh, I'm in the kitchen, you know, making such and such because I would be in the kitchen making such and such and he would hear me and he was like, oh, well, what did you put in it? And it sounds so good and I wish I could have some. So I was so existing in it that it was easy to talk about because think about someone trying to like tell you something that they don't really exist in versus 
is just a part of their daily life. Like it is just a part of who they are. Like all the details match. There's no duplicity. It's going to be like two different things. That's how it was. So how I played it up was that like it, it was that way, right? Like when he was, you know, talking about food, uh, you know, liking this and this, I would say, oh, I make that really great. Or I, I don't know how to make that. I, I want to learn how to make that. These are all conversations that are playing up my skill sets without play, like trying too hard, if that makes sense, because I'm just existing in it. Could you please explain more about the duplicity thing? I really want to be married. I'm 51 and no children. Listen to your information and to apply it, but nothing yet. So the older we get, especially as women, the more limited our options are just because most men in that age group are going to be married or they're going to be people that filter themselves out because of our standards, right? Like sometimes the older you get, the more standards you have, the more non-negotiables you have. So, you know, that can be another thing. I was talking to someone the other day and, you know, she's, she could have gotten married 20 years ago after her divorce, but waited 20 years. And with every passing year, her standards are going higher and there's less options. So you're going to have to put yourself out there more. And I don't just mean apps. I mean like assist uh, help from family and friends, assist matchmaking services, go to new events, join groups, like really make more effort because there are going to be less places uh, where you can find uh, suitable bachelors is because there's less of them around. Most men that would be in your age group are already married, right? So um, level up, like do you work out? By the way, the older you are, the more of an advantage you have if you work out. Like you are in the top tier 1% because most people do not work out. So go for the high hanging fruit. Always go for the things that everyone isn't doing. Working out is something most people aren't doing. Work out, eat healthy, look into carnivore, keto, low carb. All out of these diets can help you, you know, keep inflammation away, reverse age, red light therapy, infrared sauna. Like these are all things that I, I do and I love. So take extra care of yourself. Put yourself out there more. Ask for assistance. Duplicity is when you have counter intentions, where when you think men are bad and you want to get married, things like that, or money is evil, but I want money. That's duplicity, where all of you doesn't agree and align with what you're trying to attract. How to keep polarity and long distance when you only talk on the phone? The calls have become dry and boring. Don't talk on the phone a lot is what I would recommend. Have Zoom dates instead. Like act like you would act like if you were not long distance. So on a Zoom date, he can send over a meal. He can door dash a meal to you and you would get dressed up, get dolled up, exactly how you would behave on an actual date. You would behave on a Zoom date. Stop doing like the boring phone conversations. It gets, it gets, I'm not a big phone talker, so I can understand why they would get boring. How do you suggest we tell the guy you're dating for marriage on the first date and then I'll be rotational dating? I don't think you have to tell the guy on the first date. Tell him when it comes up. So how I did it is that uh, when it would come up, I would say, my, you know, my mom has cancer and, you know, she really wants to see me settle down and married. So she's looking for someone from me. And obviously they already knew this, most of them, other than Irfan, because she's the one that introduced me and my friends did. So that there's also that. But I don't think that you have to say it on the first date. You can say it when it comes up. Uh, thank you for saying that, Miss Malik. <laughs> can we put on our dating profile that we are dating for marriage? You can. My recommendation is 
to not rely on dating apps for marriage unless they're like very niche dating apps like I used that are like very niche culturally and designed for marriage. I think most apps are no longer designed for marriage. I'm, I'm sure there's some that are that are very niche, but most aren't. So I would recommend family, friends, groups, um, other places to meet people, like putting yourself out there in places where you're meeting new people, even if it's, you're meeting a lot of women, because you can tell those women and those women might have a brother, or uncle, you know, they might know people, a friend, a colleague. And so I still recommend uh, going through other people. Yeah, I would, I personally would not use Tinder, eHarmony, any of these sites, because a lot of them are just businesses that they profit from keeping you there versus getting you married. So that's, I, I'm not a big fan of these sites. You can volunteer, you can join church group, you can join meetup group. There's things you can do. Concepts that I learned from you that I apply every day. I want to be grateful for natural consequences, rubber band, polarity. My desires are not problems to solve limiting beliefs. Awesome. Those are some of my favorites as well. How much does a woman's social network matter when getting a husband? So both a man and woman's social network really, really matters because evolutionarily speaking and religiously speaking and culturally speaking, these things kept us accountable. So a lot of accountability comes from our family. So for example, if Irfan was to stop acting right for some reason, he would not only have to answer to my family, my friends, but also to his family. I mean, you know, and not that that's the only reason that he's accountable, but the truth is that human beings need accountability. We need that aspect of that's why I think that removing public shaming from the Western world is one of the worst ideas ever. Because if you can't shame people, you know, if they're not even they don't they keep themselves from feeling shame, then they do things that are out of alignment. So all of these things contribute to your marital success. A marriage is more of a village thing. It's not like something that happens in isolation. So I think it's very important to have good social networks for both of you guys. How to deal with a husband who doesn't want to grow with me? So what I would say is accept him where he's at and you're more likely to meta update him. Stop treating him with like someone you have to deal with and treat him with someone who's treat him like someone who's a part of your team and agree with him where you can find agreement instead of focusing on the places that you're finding disagreement. Do you have any standard communication grids to help communicate with men? Many conscious couture coach talks about communication. Uh, gut level emotional chorus talks about communication. Uh, for book recommendation, I would say Nonviolent Communication is a great book on communicating not only just with the men, but with everyone in, in understanding people's communication better as well. Is another one. Yeah, society has definitely become shameless and that is not a good thing. Hey, Mina, I'm from Italy and I'm in online dating for men who are in Texas. What should I say when they ask me to go out or where I have? Yeah, I'm I'm not a huge fan of dating this way. Uh, as a woman, that would make me nervous. Like, there's no way for me to, like, vet him. He lives in a different country. I don't know his family and friends. If I travel to him, like, I don't know if he's a serial killer or a rapist. I don't want him coming to me and then, like, knowing where I live. So I'm a, I would, personally, I don't think I'm a good person to answer that because I'm very careful and tend to be a little bit more traditional in these aspects. And I cannot imagine dating a man in a different country that I can't vet properly. So I, I'm not sure.
I offer myself to be all yours for 30 days. Oh my God. I wish I could do that. For, actually, that would be really fun. That would be really fun. Is drinking alcohol on the first date okay? I would personally say stay away from alcohol while you're rotational dating. Generally, do everything opposite of everyone else and you'll have so much more success. If everyone's ca calling themselves a 10, call yourself average. If everyone's sleeping around on the first date or being a boyfriend, girlfriend, do rotational dating. If everyone's drinking alcohol, don't drink it. Like just do the opposite and you will stand out and it, you're just going to get a lot more attention and you're just going to have a lot more success. I haven't seen this TV show. What is the TV show Swan? I haven't seen it. Is that on Netflix or like TV TV? We don't have cable. That sounds interesting. Let me write it down. Tell me more about it. I'm curious now. Do you suggest wearing dresses or can you wear a nice top and short? I personally would say if you want to get married fast, be as feminine as possible because it's so rare these days. So wear dresses and skirts. If you, only if you want to do it fast. Oh, it's a makeover show, you said, in the 2000s. I haven't seen it. Now I want to. Where can I watch this? You know, can I live in the same house with my boyfriend if he's willing to pay the house and all the bills? I'm not like I'm not in a big favor of boyfriend girlfriend relationships or living together before marriage. Though that just goes against my personal values, so I would not recommend it. Uh, again, Mia, I don't believe in boyfriend girlfriend relationships. They're not a legal status, spiritual status, evolutionary status, or religious status. So I don't even know what that means, to be honest with you. What does it mean to be a man's girlfriend? If you can explain it to me, I'd be I think maybe I'd be more open to it. I don't know what that means. Oh, in involved plastic surgery. Yeah, I'm not big on plastic surgery, uh, so I don't know if I'm going to watch it. I'm very skirmish with stuff like that. Yeah, I do that too. Oh, my God. Uh, Ho Hoboni, I think it is said, you broke me. I can no longer watch TV shows the same. I have been analyzing all the characters, way of being, container issues, sabotaging. Yeah, this is what Irfan and I do too. Oh, it's hilarious. We can't watch anything now without doing their, like even Irfan does it. He's like, oh, they're having a container issue. She's a self-aware Barbie. Uh, he's blah, blah, blah. Like right now we're watching like these Pakistan, like three different Pakistani dramas at the same time. I don't recommend that. It gets really confusing. And this one that we're watching, he, Irfan's like the guy is freaking Irfan out because he's like he's acting like a child he's not being a masculine like container for her and so he keeps like calling him out through the screen you know you used to have trouble pair bonding and healthy long term friendships how did you change that I did in a work around it that's what I'm teaching in my new course repaired um, I used to have pair bonding trouble with everyone, relationships, friendships, family, like everyone. <laughs> so I've come a long way. Okay, so Pakistani series, um, there's so many that I love. Let me see if I can remember all the names. My absolute number one favorite is Mere Paas Tum Ho. It's like my absolute, I'm going to try to spell it. Someone who can spell it, maybe put it in the chat. Let me see if I can spell it. Mere Paas it is so sad. Oh my god, but it's so good. If this is my absolute if someone says only tell me one, this is the one I'm going to recommend, okay? The other one that I really love is Kesi Teri Khud Gerzi. I'm not going to try to spell that. It's a really great one. So good. I I know Tere Ben is really hyped up right now. I didn't love it. Um, Irfan didn't love it either. We liked it like halfway through and then it just got like repetitive and, and weird and they started dragging it out. So I, di I didn't love that one either. Um, let's see what else. 
which else did, there's so many that i loved but i forget the names i'm bad with like movie names and, and tv names so and restaurant names oh my god i'm horrible with restaurant names yes they see you watched it right it was so good it's so good you'll see like gut level emotional response you'll see so much in there yeah seeing all the mistakes she made like the man had potential she just had to activate it he was such an amazing husband and father and then oh she just she destroyed that man like it was just so good i wish more pakistani dramas had subtitles because if you want to see what feminine and masculine energy looks like and you want to see polarity and you want to see relationship skills there's no better way that's why i feel like i'm the best person to teach on pair bonding because not only do i have the scientific knowledge but there is a limit on scientific knowledge because they're never going to follow a couple for like 50 60 years they're not engrossed in the culture they're just studying it i don't have that limitation because i have access to my culture and in my culture you see all of this playing out you see pair bonding you see healthy relationship you see polarity, you see masculine feminine dynamics, you see complicated relationships and how men and women navigate them. So good, so good. I did recommend Hamraz. My mom used to love that movie. It was one of her favorite movies. Yes, that was one of my mom's favorite movies. She used to say, this is why boyfriends are exciting and husbands are boring. And she used that movie as an example. Like she was trying to cheat that man and he loved her and she ended up loving him back and her boyfriend was using her, right? My mom used to love that movie so much. Um, the, most of the Pakistani dramas are available on um, YouTube, but unfortunately YouTube doesn't do subtitles for Pakistani dramas. It's very rare and they're very inconsistent. So try netflix netflix has a few but also um does does anyone know if ar a r y digital who makes most of the good box and dramas there's other ones too but they make most of them if they have an app with subtitles I i'm gonna try to look into that for you guys there's no other place where you can learn everything about feminine energy, masculine energy, polarity and relationships than Pakistani dramas. The thing is that Indian Indian culture is known for Bollywood movies and then Pakistani culture is more known for these serials. So Pakistani people watch Bollywood movies, but Indian people watch Pakistani dramas like they're really good. They're so good. The character development, the the clothing, the homes. Oh, my God. These Pakistani mansions that they use, by the way, this is big business. My family does this too, my extended family, is they'll go back to Pakistan, buy a big mansion, and then rent it out to these studios that film these dramas. And it's like very, very profitable. I don't know if you guys knew that, but I'm just mentioning that because I love looking at these huge Pakistani mansions. They're just so good. Do you recommend Western Black women going for Pakistani men? Um... You can, it would largely be a waste of time. I would be more concerned with you being used only because um, Pakistani men typically and women do not marry outside of the culture. It's very rare. It's very rare. And a lot of like predatory people can use this to your like to their advantage and lead you on. And at the end be like, my mom didn't agree. For example, someone was writing this whole thing in the comments, Armand was telling me, I, I don't, I read certain comments and like reply for like 20 minutes and then I just get busy and, and I, but he reads through a lot of the comments and he was saying, someone's writing this whole thing about like, that I'm wrong about passport bros and all of these people are coming to their country and, and having, you know, sex with all these women. So my question is, how come they're not doing that to Pakistani women? How come? All of these negative passport bros that you claim are taking advantage of women, how come they're not going to Pakistan and doing it? What is it about Pakistani culture and Pakistani women where that's not an option? Right? So it goes back to the standards of your culture. And the truth is that my culture is very hard on men and women for marrying outside the culture. It does happen. I have one cousin that married outside the the you know, religion and everything. I've known a few men that have done it. It's very rare. Um, they usually have to cut off ties with family members. You're not always accepted. 
it's very rare where it happens the way that you would want it to. There's more incidences of you getting attached and then them not being able to pull it off. Because Box City parents know how to emotionally blackmail you out of anything. Let me just tell you that, okay? <laughs> Yeah, someone said there are subtitles on some of them, but not all of them. I I, th I want to check on the app because I'm wondering if maybe even if there's a membership, it might be worth it. I'm going to check ARY digital app. The new generation of Pakistanis, oh my God, these people are freaking crushing it. They're very educated, very well culturally in the know very talented and very cultured and like respectful like i'm blown away like my parents generation and then there's my generation and then there's this new up-and-coming generation of pakistanis that just they've blown me away i keep pointing them out to my children as well just the talent the level of education the level of classiness and these are the people that are making the new pakistani dramas and movies and they're killing it. They're just so good. I'm going to try to make a list of ones where the subtitles are consistent. I know Armand had found one, a Pakistani drama that he thought had Pakistani like subtitles, American subtitles, and they were incorrect. So Amazon Prime has some, Netflix has them, but the best ones are on YouTube and YouTube doesn't have the subtitles. I'll look into that though. I'm dating a man who got me a ring. He is a provider, shares my values, but has some feminine traits like the way he laughs. I call him a girly masculine provider. Should I worry about it? I think, I mean, these kind of things don't bother me. Uh, I'm not like picky about like cosmetic things. I, I want to make sure the good things are right. Like, how many masculine traits do you have, right? Like, I, I always ask myself that. If, if something about Irfan tries to, like, annoy me, and I ask myself, well, what things are annoying about you, Mina, that he never even brings up, right? So there's annoying things about everyone. You could marry the best guy, and he could be annoying in one year. So I personally don't care about that stuff. Like, I, I, I wouldn't call someone those kind of things. But, I mean, if, if we're going to be that picky, we're all going to be single. I'm just, like, people are not perfect. Mina is right about the families being involved in the marriage process. I am East African Muslim, and my brother handled everything. Yeah, that's how it was. It, that's how it's always been. We're the only ones that changed it now. Yeah, I mean, I feel like no matter what they do, we always find something to nitpick. And by the way, notice that men don't do it. I have to tell you the story. I mean, let me let me finish chewing. And then I do have to leave for an appointment. But so this is a silly story, but it just shows you how much more forgiving men are than women are and how much more tolerant men are than women are. I uh, went to a wedding a couple of years ago and it was like assigned seating and, and Irfan and I got placed on a table with some of the bride's friends that we didn't know. This was a Pakistani uh, wedding and these friends were Indian. And I don't even know how the conversation got to this, but I started talking about this one Pakistani singer. And because these people were Indian, they didn't know this guy, right? But they were curious. And as I was telling them about this Pakistani singer, I the song came on and I thought that that song was the same guy. So I said, oh my God, what a coincidence. Here we are talking about so-and-so and, -so, and that, that's his song. And they were like, really? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, wow, like what a coincidence. And we were laughing about it, right? Later on, after the event, when we went to the hotel room, Irfan goes, by the way, that was not Ali Heather. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, that song 
it, that was not him. And I said, really, it wasn't? He's like, no. And I'm like, why didn't you correct me? I totally told them the wrong thing. And he's like, I didn't want to embarrass you. It's not, it's not a big deal. And let me just tell you, if it was a woman, she would have called him out, right? Like, but it's not necessary to, like, Irfan would never, even if I'm saying something incorrect, he would never be like, oh, babe, you're, you're wrong. Like, he would never embarrass me in front of anyone, even though I'm telling you I wouldn't have been embarrassed. I would have just been like, oh, that's not Ali Heather. But he didn't say anything at that time until we got to the hotel room. And then he was like, oh, by the way, that was not him. So I'm just trying to tell you, I feel like men are so much more tolerant of like things than we are. I can't tell you how many little things I've nitpicked about my husband, but when I've reversed it, I'm like, he never does that to me. I'm sure there's things that are very annoying about me. I'm sure there's things that drive him crazy. I don't even know those things because he never brings them up. Like that is love. That's like real tolerance. It's like real pair bonding. It's like really accepting someone for who they are. And honestly, he's taught me how to love through his love. So I, I think that women these days are just too picky. We're just too picky about random stuff that doesn't matter. Like our parents and their parents and their parents were not like that. I used to think marriage is weird until you reframed it for me so beautifully. Now I'm asking myself when and how the girlfriend boyfriend came up. Been kind of curious about that lately. So true. So many men are so sweet and tolerant. Yes, right? And so I think I've learned from him to be more sweet and tolerant as well and let things go and accept him for all that he brings. Mina, I would love advice about pair bonding with stepchildren. Husband is great, but I'm struggling here, especially with a crazy bio mom. Yeah, I, to oh my God, this is, this is, we were just having a conversation about this, actually, uh, my husband and I, where, why in some ways it's easier for the guy to marry someone with children than for the mom because, or for the girl, because usually the mom is attached and she still wants control. Like, you know, with a lot of men, like my ex-husband is not in the picture, right? So Irfan could take over the entire parenting and everything and own Arman as his child versus if the ex was constantly there mingling, like, you know, interfering. And a lot of us women have to deal with that, have to deal with the mom. So um, I'm going to teach this stuff in my pair bonding course. This is something that I think that you need to first learn how to pair bond in general and then be able to apply it to your normal relationships. And then only you can try and apply it to the more difficult relationships because not every relationship will lead towards pair bonding. You could have the best pair bonding skills and not be able to pair bond with certain individuals that are not open to you in that way. So that's another thing. Middle Eastern, South Asian men rarely marry outside of the culture. They'll happily make a woman outside their culture their girlfriend, but they're not good enough for marriage. This is true, Ali. This is true. And so that's why I would say that I'm, I'm sure it happens. I know some instances, but it is so rare that I would say don't, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time on it. They're, they'll just bail at the last second and bail, blame their parents or something, you know, or their religion. You know, what would you recommend if a girl is ready for kids, but husband says he, our relationship is not. I'm 29 and worried about my biological clock. How old is he? Did you marry in the right age group? And secondly, when he says he's not, what does he need to be ready is the next question that I would ask. I would say that's interesting. Well, what, what, what would indicate to you that you're ready? What would we need? I noticed that most men that are divorced marry outside of the culture. No, I have not noticed that in Desi culture at all. In fact, uh, if they were divorced, 
married outside the culture and divorced, they're more likely to marry inside the culture. It's very rare for Desi men to marry outside the culture. So just be careful with that. Uh, Mina, if a guy doesn't bring up the topic of marriage and early dating, how do we bring it up? You can ask him what he's looking for in a relationship. You can also mention that your family is looking for a guy for you and introducing you to people. Like There is ways that you can bring it into the conversation. Mina, as you said, embody the work, and I have been doing that and seeing how my man changes for the better i love that yeah he's he's simply responding to you that's what men do i love that when we stop the blame game and focus on ourselves and then we become the oracle it is so much easier to get results thank you zainab i appreciate that Yes, I married a Mormon and it made things really difficult. I would never recommend marrying if his parents do not like you. I, I agree with Krishna here 1000%. Look, listen, these days marriage is tough as it is because it's almost counterculture, right? Now you have to find someone that matches your age range, matches your personal values, has the same kind of like traditional roles that you desire, right? Wants that. And then if you add on top of that, that he's from a different culture and his parents don't like you, it's just going to make it more difficult. So obviously there are relationships intercultural that succeed, but I personally would not marry anyone whose family was against me and all of this stuff because I don't want that kind of complication in my life. I am a very sakun seeking person. Like sakun means inner peace, um, just like calm Zen life. There's nothing in me that is attracted towards any sort of drama, any sorts of conflicts. I just like a simple, like easy life. So I don't want to add any sort of these complications to my life. There, I don't see any person worthy. In fact, if I loved him, I would tell him, you know what, you should marry someone your parents would like. I want to make your life easier as well. Ladies, I am loving this chat, but I do have to go. Uh, I have an appointment, as I mentioned earlier. This was so much fun. Remember that there's only 48 hours left for repaired um, before the pre-order price goes away. And uh, leave a comment. Give this video a thumbs up. Let me know your favorite part. What are you currently leveling up or working on in your life? And I will see you in the next one. Bye.